This is the very first lesson in Microsoft Flight Simulator, Student Pilot Lesson 1, Strict and Level Flight. Don't look down on it, it's very important. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to fly straight and level. Shall we proceed full speed ahead? Ah, not so fast, rocket pants. I've got the airplane, so you just relax a bit. Okay. We're here in the Cessna 172 in the beautiful Puget Sound region of western Washington. Imagine, if you will, that we've just taken off from Bremerton National Airport just west of Seattle. We're going to learn what it looks like to fly level, how to use the joystick to change our pitch, and lastly, I'll introduce you to your new best friend, besides me, your instructor, of course, the trim wheel. Right now, I need you to check your keyboard and make sure the numlock light is lit. When that light is on, we can use the keys on the numeric keypad to look around while we fly. Press and hold the four key for a moment. See how the horizon is level relative to the windowsill? Release the four key and press the six key. Those are the Olympic mountains out there. Now they're pretty, aren't they? Yep. Release the six key and look at the attitude indicator. The attitude indicator displays the airplane's bank or the angle the wings make with the horizon and its pitch or the amount the nose points up or down. I'm going to keep the airplane flying straight, but I want you to change your pitch. Uh, that is, the airplane's pitch attitude. Now then, if you don't have a joystick, be sure to turn the numlock off again so that you can fly the airplane in just a second when I ask you to. I have a joke. See the little orange dot in the center of the attitude indicator's miniature airplane? This yes. represents the airplane's nose. Right now, it's a little above the white line that represents the horizon. This means we're most likely in level flight, thus holding a constant altitude. We can tell our altitude is constant by looking at the altimeter, located just to the right of the attitude indicator. The altimeter's large hand, the 100-foot hand, isn't moving, nor is the needle in the VSI, or the vertical speed indicator, moving. This indicates that we're in level flight. Now let's try an experiment. I want you to gently pull the joystick back about half an inch from its center position and hold it there. Now watch the response. The nose of the airplane pitches up. The miniature airplane in the attitude indicator pitches up too. Pull back on the stick. Now look at the altimeter. The 100-foot hand is moving clockwise, which indicates that your altitude is increasing. Immediately below the altimeter is the vertical speed indicator, and its needle indicates a climb. Now, pitch the airplane's nose downward with a gentle forward push on the joystick, about half an inch from its center position. Hold it there and watch the response. The airplane's nose pitches down, and the attitude indicator's miniature airplane points toward the ground. Notice that the altimeter rotates counterclockwise, thus indicating a descent. The needle in the vertical speed indicator also points downward, indicating a descent. Okay, return the joystick to its center position. I've got the airplane, so you just relax a bit. It's safe to say that if the altimeter hands stop moving and the needle in the vertical speed indicator points to zero, then you're in level flight. Of course, if the wings are also level, then you're in straight and level flight. You can always determine how to return to straight and level flight by looking at the attitude indicator when it's not convenient to look outside the airplane. Airplanes are subject to many aerodynamic forces. Some try to pitch nose up, others try to pitch nose down. Use the trim control wheel to keep the airplane in the attitude you want. The trim control, or trim wheel as it's also called, is the little black wheel directly below the heading indicator. It's cleverly marked pitch, up, and down. This part takes a little bit of patience, so you might want to pause the simulator a bit to prepare your mind for the next subject. Press P to pause the simulation, and when your mind is ready, press P again to continue with the lesson. Go ahead.
Right now, the airplane is trimmed to stay at about 100 knots. Even if nobody were at the controls, the airplane would do its best to maintain 100 knots. If we pull or push on the stick, we have to force it to change that speed. I need you to do that now. Pull back gently on the stick until the airspeed reads 90 knots. Adjust the pitch slightly to maintain 90 knots. You will notice that we have to make tiny changes in the joystick to maintain 90 knots. But no matter what, you can't let go. If you do, the airplane will pitch down until it finds 100 knots again. Carefully click the word up on the pitch trim wheel three times. Or you could press the end key three times. Either way, the pointer on the right side of the wheel should be pointing at the middle of the nine lines on the trim wheel. Oops. You probably noticed that the airplane pitched up rather you abruptly when you did that. You should be able to slowly relax the pressure you have been holding on the joystick, and the airspeed should settle at 90 knots. Whenever we make a change in the pitch of our airplane, like for climbs or descents, we use the trim to remove the pressure we have to hold on the stick. Instead of us having to hold the stick forward or back, we let aerodynamics do the work for us. I've got the airplane, so you just relax a bit. Okay. Here's the big secret about trim. When an airplane is trimmed for hands-off flying and power changes are made, the airplane automatically changes pitch in an attempt to maintain the approximate airspeed for which it was last trimmed. This means that the nose will pitch down when you reduce power and pitch up when you increase power. The airplane automatically changes pitch to maintain the airspeed for which it was last trimmed. So if you want to change airspeed and level flight by adjusting the throttle, you need to retrim the airplane once you're at the speed you want. Let's give this a try. When you reduce the power, the nose of the airplane wants to drop because the airplane still wants to fly at 100 knots. Don't let the nose drop. Keep the airplane in level flight as it decelerates by pulling back gently on the joystick and holding the altitude constant. Right now, the airplane is trimmed for 100 knots at its present power setting. I want you to pull the throttle back and set the power for 2100 RPM on the tachometer. The tachometer is located on the lower right-hand corner of the instrument panel. 2100 RPM will give us a speed of about 90 knots. Slow down. Now apply sufficient nose-up trim to eliminate the control forces for level flight at 90 knots. Okay, let's try increasing our speed to 100 knots. Move the throttle forward and set the power to 2400 RPM. This time, the nose wants to rise. Keep the airplane in level flight as it accelerates by applying forward pressure on the joystick. Apply sufficient nose-down trim to eliminate the control forces for level flight at 100 knots. Speed up. There you have it. That's how you trim during power changes in level flight. Okay, just to review, we have discussed what level flight looks like, how to use the joystick to change the pitch, how to trim, and how to use the trim while changing airspeed in level flight. Got that? I'm impressed with your performance. These are some of the most important topics in flying. Make sure you're comfortable before moving on. Rerun the lesson if you feel you need to. I don't mind. I'll be here all day, stuck in your computer. I love it in here. In our next lesson, we will learn how to make an airplane turn. Because, let's face it, unless the place you are going happens to be right in front of you, sooner or later, you're going to have to turn. For now, take a break, get up, and stretch your legs and flying arms. You might want to read the next few sections of the ground school, too. I'll be here when you're ready to start flying again. Thank you.